Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Well, the day has finally come where this magnificent beast has taken to the skies. After all of the build-up to this colossal event, it was time for it to fly on Thursday, the 20th of April, 2023. That is a date for the history books right there. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Now, obviously, SpaceX did first attempt to launch a few days earlier on Monday. However, that attempt was soon scrubbed as one of the valves for the pressurization system of Booster 7's liquid oxygen tank froze up. However, the teams did take advantage that day and modify the testing to become a wet dress rehearsal, and they proceeded all the way up to T minus 10 seconds. After that attempt, the propellants were detanked from the vehicles, and soon the crews returned. An interesting point to note is that they could soon be seen working on Booster 7's hydraulic pressure units. A lot of attention there as well as the Booster Quick Disconnect. Just look at these people here waving to the hoop cam. Anyway, soon enough, SpaceX confirmed that they were still all good to go for a launch attempt on 420. Yes, Elon's hint a few weeks ago would indeed end up being true after all. The new time arrived pretty darn quickly too. There we were Wednesday evening, just after midnight, the road closed, and a few hours later, SpaceX performed another test with the fire suppression system. Not long after that, the chopsticks let go of Ship 24 and moved into launch position, looking just a little like Christ the Redeemer in Brazil. Brazil. It was on. The orbital launch mount started venting, so things were progressing very nicely. Right on target, SpaceX teams announced that they were go for propellant load. And just like predicted on the timeline, not long after, the loading of propellants onto the upper stage started as well. SpaceX's stream went live with the audience around the world cheering them on, and man, did they really go all out on the webcasts. Just insane visuals all over this, so do go and watch it if you missed any of this. The old Star Hopper footage always fun, but just look at the drone shots of the launch site itself. Simply amazing. The engine chill started on the rocket, but at T minus 15 minutes, the hold down clamps were actually unlatched. Wait, what? Yes, that was unexpected, wasn't it? We had all assumed that they would just release those after the engines fired up, but it seems like SpaceX first fires up the Raptors at a low thrust, with the rocket just basically sitting there on the clamps. Once the data is all looking good, SpaceX must just then throttle them up to actually lift off. I'm going to need to digest all of that a little more next week. Now we did of course have that hold here with all of us out there feeling massively disappointed, only for a moment though because the count popped back up. Oh my, we were still good to go. Now all of this time I couldn't help but think that there would be an abort in the final few seconds. The engines ignited though, could you believe it? The massive plume burst out from under the pad hurling debris everywhere. It wasn't moving though, no way that it would lift off, right? Wrong, just check that out. The largest and most powerful rocket ever created had just taken flight for the very first time. This is one for the history books right there as the super heavy booster together with Starship on top took to the skies. After what seemed like an eternity, the behemoth had cleared the tower. And look what popped up there. This really gorgeous overlay showing all of the great information. Oh, wait a second though. Three Raptor engines had already shut down on the booster. Looks like they went out basically right through the liftoff sequence, assuming of course that they fired up at all. In fact, if we replay this, the rocket takes off almost diagonally. Now, this doesn't look particularly good either. I think that was one of the hydraulic pressure units which control the central engine thrust vector control. Hard to steer the rocket without that. I think it's very safe to say that SpaceX made a good decision moving away from hydraulic to electric gimbaling with the upcoming vehicles. There we have 40 seconds in, there goes another engine, but still powering on. Sadly, more engines going out past the one minute mark. Yeah, this was starting to get concerning, but thankfully the pointy end was still up. It did certainly seem that the Starship was accelerating slower than expected though. Right up, past the two minute mark, they still seem to have some control. As it passed about 1700 kilometers or 1000 miles per hour, the camera view on board finally popped up with this great shot. But the control there was starting to look a little shaky. Starship was slowly rolling. We did get these beautiful views from the camera between the stages awaiting the next big event. Stage 
separation, but ah, that more violent role here certainly wasn't looking good. In fact, it became pretty clear in the upcoming seconds that SpaceX had lost control. Starship had started to flip around. Both stages certainly seemed doomed at this point, but here is one thing that I think is good to note. Even flipping around like this, it was all holding itself together. This colossal beast flipping around in a still reasonably low atmosphere and remaining intact. I was sure that it would just rip itself apart, but no, this thing is structurally super strong, holding together incredibly well, making for some pretty mind-blowing views. SpaceX were going to need to detonate this beast manually with the flight termination system. It did take them a little while to decide to do it, but wow, just check that out. And that was it. Booster 7 and Ship 24 remains fell from the sky. As stated many times though, everything past clearing that launch site was icing on the cake. Although SpaceX weren't able to make the stage separation work as intended, this was indeed quite the spectacle. The vehicles ended up making it to an altitude of around 39 kilometers and to a top speed of around 2,150 kilometers per hour before the end of the mission. So the big question, how did the launch site hold up after the incredible thrust of all those Raptor engines? Well, not long after, SpaceX shared this awesome drone shot. Just look at all of that debris, not just on the wetlands near the launch mount, but even in the ocean. That really suggested that there was a lot of concrete that had just gone flying. Where was most of that from? Well, check this out. Yeah, yikes. Down there under the pad, there was now a massive crater. Indeed, it does now seem that the more substantial water deluge system is needed, and I think a flame diverter certainly wouldn't go as Stray. I guess Booster 7 thought so too, because it had commenced a great deal of the digging work already. Now, before all of you start to worry too much, I think it is best if we just take a step back, let the dust settle before drawing too many conclusions without all of the necessary information. There were some interesting insights though that were leaked out with these shots here. This one here was a great view from the ship forward flaps looking downward onto the full stack. It looks like a few of those heat shield tiles did go missing from Ship 24, but overall, they did seem to hold up pretty well considering this was the very first flight. Then there was this. Wow, this shot here must have been taken just during those few seconds between the booster exploding and then the ship. It's insane that they actually managed to stream that to the downlinks in that short time. So yes, after more than a year of being with us, Booster 7 and Ship 24 finally got to put on quite the show. Even with all of the quirks of this flight, it still managed to show us what the Starship vehicle will be capable of in the future. Now, there is obviously a lot to digest. The real damage around the pad, which will become clearer in the upcoming days. We've always said that Stage Zero and everything that supports the rocket launch at Starbase was just as complex as the rocket itself. And that is certainly true. But you know what? SpaceX is the master of iterative design, and I think that you might be quite surprised as the future unfolds. With the long-awaited test flight of Starship now complete, there is yet another fun Starship-related launch that has also just occurred. The creators of the card game Starship Shuffle, which you may remember from quite a while back, have now released their new full board game, Starship Stage Zero. It's got tons of tokens, cards, and boards to relive the Starbase development experience, all with loads of input from the space community, this is definitely a great memento to pick up. And of course, we've also got the range of merch to celebrate this massive milestone too. Links to all of that is below. Also, remember that we've been working very hard on the new Deep Dive video to be released this very weekend. Super excited to see what you think of that one. And then we've got some Deep Dive videos linked here on screen as well. Thank you as always for watching all this way through. I will see you very shortly in the next video.